So what I want you to do is go right back to basics and remember that human beings are no different to every other organism on this planet. Whether we are a plant or an animal or a human being, the way nature has created us is that you're either in survive or thrive. If you're in conditions that are unfavorable, then the body or the plant is put into survival mode. If you are in conditions that are favorable, all these organs are running properly and we thrive. So we're going to look at how the system is stuck in survive and what happens when the system is stuck in survive. There is, um, on this overview, we talk about looking at research upstream. A lot of research actually looks downstream. That means it's looking at the very tiny little changes that are happening. It may be looking at how your physiology in temperature is affected. And that's called downstream because it's looking at the detail right down in the system. But actually, and that, that's fine, and, and they notice that the energy system isn't working in the mitochondria, but there's a reason why the energy system isn't working. When your body is shut down, it will stop the production because it wants you to be ticking over. Our physiology is being trapped in this protective system, but fundamentally, we are programmed to survive. And Sale noticed that when you are thrown into this survival system, you will send out chemicals for your survival to pump you up, to try and keep you going. When you live life in this survival track, Sale noticed that at this stage you develop diseases, the gut starts to go so that you may have had um, IBS or gut upsets. You may have noticed different things not quite right. And that could have been happening a while before the ultimate crash. And that's what Sale calls the period of resistance. But then if the body can't correct itself and get itself back into thrive mode, even though it's trying to keep going under this pressure. Ultimately, the third stage of general adaptive syndrome, the reptile kicks in and it says, okay, shut down the system. And that is your amazing protective system that is designed to try to keep you going, even though you're ticking over. And chronic fatigue is the third stage of exhaustion when nothing else has worked. And this is what the, your mechanism, this survival mechanism that we have in our bodies does for us. So we need to get you back into healthy conditions and we need to get you out of this condition that is saying that you need survival. You need to be in survival mode. And that's what we're going to do. In your head, is a little thing called your amygdala. It's part of the brain. And its job is to be like a little meerkat. It's doing this all the time. It's got antennas out. And it's saying, are you okay? Are you okay? We're all good? Everything fine? And if it notices any threat, it does this. And as soon as it does that, it sends a message downstream into another bit of your brain called the hypothalamus. And the hypothalamus is your body brain. And its job is literally to control your body. You do nothing to make that happen. You don't have to consciously make blood pressure work or the thermostat or functioning of the metabolic systems. So all of this is unconscious, automatic. It's biological process that happens every second of your life. When it gets the message from the amygdala that there is something not right, 
then it literally turns on the system called your autonomic nervous system and it goes to the branch that is responsible for survival. So there are actually two branches for, for survival. There is what, we, what I'm calling the red branch, which is known as your sympathetic nervous system. And we'll call that the chimp because the red branch is the one that's high arousal. It puts you into high arousal and its job is to make sure that you are alerted to danger and you can get away from it. You do not need to be eating a Mars bar when a tiger is after you. You do not need to be having sex when a tiger is after you. So the reproductive system is influenced massively when there is threat. The digestive system, your metabolisms, any metabolisms that you don't need for fighting a tiger will be compromised, including your immune system and your gut you will go into this reactive thinking. There's no analytical thinking. It's just, I've got to do it, I've got to do it. And you, you do it. And that's what you're meant to do for fight and flight. That's what you are meant to do when you are put into that system. And that's what adaptation is. When we talk about a maladaptive function, it means that this system that is designed for you to adapt to threat and to nurturing situations has run amok. Now you're stuck in the red track. If you're feeling wired and on edge and everything feels like a threat, or you're stuck in this other track, which is what we're going to call the gray track. And this track is actually part of your healthy system, the parasympathetic nervous system. But when it notices that you are in so much arousal, you are so hypervigilant, the dorsal vagus nerve will then kick in and it plummets to the point where you are shut down to tick over. And that grey track, if we look at the next slide, the red track is what we call the chimp because it comes from the system that we share with other mammals, that's their survival system, is to go into fight and flight. This grey track is the one that we share with reptiles and it's, a, it's the most ancient part of the brain and its job is to freeze. So when it detects threat, it will literally... <coughs> we don't want to be stuck in the reptilian brain that is shutting you down constantly and crashing your body. And neither do you want to be in this hyperarousal state where this autonomic nervous system is malfunctioning, is the adaptive system is malfunctioning. And you're constantly being put into this red track, this gray track. And actually what you need to be to recover and to stay healthy forever is to live in this beautiful green track. This is your vagal system your parasympathetic means it's bringing you down, it's the calm system that is there for your digestion. It enables the immune system function and allows all of your metabolism and your mitochondria to produce energy. So everything is working beautifully in the green track. And we'll talk about the vagal system next, which is part of your parasympathetic nervous system. And it is the core of getting your whole body activated and back to normal. Once you understand what is happening to your body, then it is so much less scary. This is why I'm giving you an overview of what's happening to your autonomic nervous system. So let's have a look at the green track that we're aiming to live in and aiming to get activated for your recovery. If you look at the diagram on the vagus nerve, it is such an elaborate nerve that is going through every part of your body. And if you notice it's coming from your brain, it goes into your facial muscles, into your ear, right down into your stomach and all the, all the organs needed for your immune system. So 
it's a massively powerful nervous system. It is feeding these organs in your body and it is getting feedback from the organs in the body. So it's a two-way system. And that's really important because you can't be in survival and thrive at the same time. You're either in survival or you're in thrive. So when you see how powerful that vagus system is, that means that your facial expression, your tone of voice, your pitch is affecting this system and telling this system what state you're in. So we're going to do some exercises deliberately looking at all the parts that this vagal system is working on. We're going to look at tone of voice, facial expression, breathing, getting your stomach working again by getting calm and composed back in the parasympathetic. So if you don't use it, you lose it. We're going to lose the red track and the red gray track and we're going to be activating the green one until the body automatically works it for you again. So very briefly, we look at the diagram. There you have the red one is our chimp. Its job is to mobilize us, to get us out of any threat or any danger or hardship. You may have noticed that when you go to walk upstairs, this red track wants to mobilize you. It wants to put you into arousal to stop you doing it, to make you run away from it or to fight it. And then the gray track is your reptile and its job when it detects threat is to say, okay, freeze. If you're in front of somebody, you'll be dumbstruck. You can't answer back. If you go to your front door, the reptile will just stop you in your tracks, make you petrified and prevent you from going out that door. And that's how so many people with chronic fatigue syndrome or long COVID end up housebound very quickly. I'll explain why it happens and how to get yourself out of that but it can happen so quickly. It only takes one or two bad experiences of having crashed outside for you then to be thrown into this adaptive system that says, I don't want you to risk that again. I want to shut you down. I'm going to protect you and not let you risk going outside to be hurt again. But we need to stop that. We need to make sure that we don't use those ancient systems much as they are the dominant systems. They always will be the dominant. They will always kick off first. They will be a hundred times faster than your conscious, I don't need this brain, and that's okay. If you notice it happening, I'm gonna teach you how to stop it. So let's activate this lovely green, this green track, your vagal system that you're meant to live in all of your life and that's how we get recovery.